Hello everyone, this is Sonia Nubis, the guitarist from Krypton Cobra Spell, and I did an interview with Rots Online, so check it out. Fala aí galera, beleza? Rodrigo aqui, sejam todos muito bem-vindos ao Rods Online. Se você não conhecia o canal, eu vou pedir para você se inscrever e para você que está retornando a casa, muito obrigado por mais uma visita. Vou pedir para vocês deixarem aquele like maroto e hoje nós vamos receber Sônia Nubis, a guitarrista Sônia Nubis, que está atualmente tocando com a banda brasileira Crypta e também com o Cobra Spell. A gente vai falar muito aí do, do trabalho da Sônia. E vamos falar também, é claro, de muita música, de muito Kiss, que eu sei que a Sônia é fã. Sônia, yeah. thank you very much for being here. Uh, le, you, do, you wanna, do you wanna say something for your Brazilian fans? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for having me and inviting me on your interview. And I look forward in uh, answering the questions. Rodrigão, primeiro lugar, obrigado aí também por você estar... Tá é, tá mais uma vez aí junto com a gente aí nessa parceria. Fala, valeu, valeu. Alguma coisa? Bom, inclusive, inclusive, galera, a gente vai, lógico, né? Já deu para perceber que a entrevista é em inglês. Então, se alguém tiver, é, a gente, o Rodrigo vai botar as legendas e aí você só clicar naquele CCzinho que tem aí no canto aí superior da tela para ver o que, para lógico que não fala, né? Para poder é, saber o que a gente está conversando. Sônia, can you tell us? Uh, how was your first contact with music and when you decided to play an instrument and be a part of a band? Um, well, my passion for music started at the age 14. So it's quite a while ago already. And I was introduced uh, by the music on my own. I didn't have any friends or family that was into this kind of music. So I am thankful for the existence of YouTube for me because that's the way I discovered the band Kiss. And it's also the reason why I started playing initially the bass guitar, which is my first instrument that I started playing. And uh, a year later, I also started playing the guitar after discovering uh, more bands in the extreme scene. From Kiss, I discovered Wasp, Alice Cooper. And then I also knew that there were thrash metal bands such as uh, Megadeth, which is uh, the reason why I started also to play guitar because uh, Marty Freeman, the guitarist who used to be in Megadeth, he had amazing, inspiring solos. And I thought, okay, I cannot do that with the bass. So, <laughs> so th this, this was kind of my introduction to music. And uh, the more I got into it, the more I got the urge to join a band and, and feel the same way as this artist that I look up to do, because I wanted to become also one of these amazing musicians. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all fun. it's all bands that we covered. We covered already here, and uh, we have something that we say that it's our we co we comment about the band's discography, and we comment yeah. already about Kiss. We comment already about Megadeth and and Wasp. Uh, it's this, it's yeah. something that we grew up to. And all these bands, they're so energetic and inspiring and fun to play. Um, this is why I still play them, even if they are the bands that most are the bands that gets people into music. I keep playing them. They, they never get boring or old. You can always put them on and it gives energy and motivation. And that's why I make still videos of these bands because I just it just makes me feel very good. That's <laughs> right. Sure. Basically, we love the same bands. Yeah. Chauza, can I ask you a question? Sonia, very nice to meet you. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to uh, join us in, on this chat about music and about the music that you create. Um, so since you started, you started to talk about how you became to a musician and then you started with the bass and of course bass for us, huge Kiss fans, Gene Simmons. So since you started, to, you started first to play bass yeah. and you're a Kiss fan, Uh, how Gene Simmons influenced you? Yeah, I, it's, it's a whole special um, reason why I was so inspired and why I chose the bass in particular. And certainly indeed, because Gene Simmons is my favorite member of KISS, o always has been. Uh, I love every single member a lot from the original lineup, certainly. And, um, but Gene Simmons is special because of the way he performed in the concerts from the 70s. 
um, so in the concerts of the 73, 74, the very early, early Kiss, I was always watching a lot of these videos and the way that he performs, um, the way he does the slides on the bass guitar, he did like this very boom slides uh, when he plays the song, She, you know, mm -hmm. ding, 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 wow. He did this amazing slides and I thought, wow, that sounds so deep. And he seems like he's having a lot of fun playing the bass. And his his old persona that is uh, so um, demonish. And he was totally into it. He was living it. And it was something that amazed me. And I thought, wow, to, to, to be like that, you really have to become a bass player. And um, so I, that's why I thought, OK, I have to play bass because it's it's bad, badass instrument, and um, the attitude that Gene Simmons has on stage is so unique, and certainly from from the seventies, from back from uh, from the original lineup, it's just amazing. Yeah, I, I think he's a very underrated bass player. I think Absolutely. she, yeah, I think he deserved way, way more recognition. Uh, he has a very yeah. powerful sound. The stuff that you said about the slide from Woo, this is totally yeah. powerful. Such a powerful. He, yeah, he's and not like virtuoso, but the notes that he played, especially when he plays, like, for example, you, of course, you're talking more about 74, 73, but then when you go a little bit after that, from 77, when God of Thunder oh, yeah. was already out, when he plays <laughs> that, it's heavy, it's heavy. It's, yeah. it's a it's unique funny. sound. And he did, and he did a lot of, uh, of this, this kind of thing, this kind of stuff, in Revenge. Yeah. yeah, 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 and he did it with War Machine by, by uh, in that time, and he chose different songs. But for me, I think my favorite moment in which he did the the bass solo with the blood was when he did it for the first time in a hundred thousand years. Hundred thousand years, yeah. Hundred thousand years is my favorite Kiss song, certainly because of that, and the way he did it in seventy five, seventy six. Um, there's a concert of, of this from Kobo Hall where he recorded a live album. And the way he performed in this way, that's something that inspired me a lot, a lot. Even if it was just playing one string, <laughs> it's just very amazing. Sonia, uh, did you have uh, any Kiss cover band? Oh, I, I wanted to start one. I wanted to start one um, three years ago, but it totally failed. <laughs> Why? But, but were, were you were you gonna play the well, bass it, and sing? I was going to to play uh, the guitar. I was going ah, to okay, play. okay. Yes, but so we had a, this, it's freely. It was not my initiative. Uh, even though a friend of mine wanted to do it, and I said, "Wow, this is cool because I'm a big Kiss fan, and this is a chance, you know." And I learned the whole set list. Uh, unfortunately, um, we didn't find members and I got asked at the time to play in Burning Witches. Um, so it was going to be very difficult to, to keep it going. And we had big plans. So I, we, uh, it didn't really stay together. And um, I think it would be very cool, but um, it could never become a, a thing that I can put priority on, unfortunately. Even though I have a big dream that I would love to, to, to play Kiss uh, cover song uh, with my band, maybe, or um, even better, I would love to play with Kiss, but since I, I don't know if that's gonna be still be possible, but one can dream. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows what the future holds for us? Yeah. Sonia, yeah, since since you talked about Burning Witches, and uh, let me ask you something about about the band. Around 2018, you joined the band, right? And since yeah. there, you recorded two two studio albums and a and an EP until you left the band last year. How did you join? Well, uh, Burning joined, Witches. Yeah, I I didn't know them personally, um, but I seen the the name on on internet going along a little bit, and um, so I decided to add uh, the members on Facebook. And at that time, I had a lot of guitar videos, or not, not so many as now, but I had some guitar videos, mostly bass playing videos with my bands, because before I've always been a bass player in bands. This is, was, guitar was more like a bedroom thing, just to play for fun, but not really taken too seriously. And um, apparently uh, the manager, which was, uh, which is 
Schmier from Destruction, um, he saw potential in it and uh, they asked me to uh, for auditioning and I had to go fly to Switzerland a week after to do audition, which uh, ended up to be uh, successful. So that, that's kind of how it went. Okay, now, uh, let, me, let me ask you something a little bit behind uh, uh, um, the time that you joined uh, Burn, Burning Witches. Um, I, I, was, I was watching your videos from your YouTube channel and uh, the ones that dated like six, seven years ago, uh, you were playing the bass and then you switched to guitar. So my question is uh, when you decided to and why you decided to switch uh, the bass to focus more into the guitar? That was actually when I joined Burning Witches because I had never really played a concert uh, as a guitarist ever before. Wow. So that, it was a very big challenge for me because I always was used to play the bass and play with the fingers like like this. And all of a sudden I have, I have to use a pick, um, which uh, for me, of course, it's I can play the guitar a little bit at home, but I was always playing sitting in my room and just for fun, not for actual concerts, only bass, 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 and rehearsals with bass and concerts with bass. So bass was more my own world. Um, but I started discovering um, later on that I felt more like a guitarist too, because I knew that when I was a bass player in the bands, I, as crazy as it might sound, I had a little bit of an attitude. I like to be in the front and that's kind of weird for a bass player to do that. Um, I like to like, do show and and that didn't really fit as a bass player for many bands even though i think it's pretty cool because a lot of basses like in either maiden you see like they're like the crazy show bass player but it i i um i didn't feel like it fitted in a lot of bands and as a guitarist i was more able to uh show myself and and be there and ha can hear myself um and I am, and yeah, it was totally different, but uh, I think it's something that fits me more right now. And, and the fact that I can play guitar solos in, 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 in a band is, it makes me very happy. <laughs> That's great. So but I still love the bass. I still love the bass. Just, I practice more guitar now. Yeah, you're focused into more guitar. Uh, let me, oh, Rodrigo, let me ask you one, one more, more thing related uh, to guitar. So. You, you joined uh, Burning Witches and then you became like a guitar player, more focused into the guitar player thing. But, uh, and then you recorded, as Rodrigo said, two albums and an EP, which is X and Hammer from 2018, uh, The Wings of Steel EP mm -hmm. uh, from 2019, and then Dance with the Devil on 2020, which is the one that I like the most, to be honest. I like more than X and Hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, when when you when you when you decided like all right we're gonna write a new album uh, and how how was your contribution as a guitar player to these songs? So um, the thing that held me back of being part of Burning Witches was the fact that I could not have a songwriting role in the band. So I I didn't write the the compositions of uh, Burning Witches even though I I have played a lot of lead guitars in the songs. So, um, which of course was awesome too, but I um, prefer to be in a band where I get to uh, write the music and get a voice as a musician. And this is something that I really lacked. So um, I'm very happy of being part of those albums because I think they sound very great albums. And I'm, I'm happy that I got to play so many solos there in every song. Like I got to learn to find my own sound with these um, experiences because you can imagine I've never recorded before those albums. I never recorded guitar uh, on an actual album and um, on original music. I probably have learned a lot of different songs. You know, I played a lot of Judas Priest, Kiss, but I never really played on a unique in, in the band that I actually was in. So it was a great chance to, to, to find myself as a musician and think about what are my priorities? What do I want? And uh, it was a learning experience. Great, that's great. And, and for and for you, I believe that it would that wouldn't be that much difficult because uh, the band Burning Witches, if you listen, it was high influenced by Man of War and and Judas Priest, Judas. for example. Right. Yeah, and, and I believe, oh, and, and you were already familiar because you, 
I, I believe you, you like you mentioned Judas Priest, but I believe you like also something from Man of War. And for you, yeah. it wasn't that much difficult to understand uh, th their their style or uh, their way of doing music. You know? Absolutely, and just playing the music a lot really gets you into the vibe of the band. And myself, I'm a little bit of a music nerd sometimes, so I really get into the genre, I really get into the music a lot. So I can very easily put myself in a, in a genre such as like, for example, with Crypto right now, I'm playing death metal with a black vibe. And in Cover Spell, I'm playing heavy rock with a sleazy vibe. And it's completely opposite from each other. But with both, I can really put myself into it, even if they're very different. With Burning Witches, it was very um, traditional, heavy metal sounding music with a little bit of speed metal. And, and still, I could really lose myself in it. If I, if I had a thrash metal band, I could even also lose myself just because I have an appreciation for the music. So um, I think as long as it's just good music, I can totally like sink myself in it and, and even write it if, because I have a lot of influences. You decided to leave Burning Witches just because the music or do you have uh, any idea about Crypta and Cobra Spell? So um, the reason why I, I left the band was certainly not because of Crypta or Cobra Spell. This, uh, Crypta already <laughs> existed uh, a year before I left the mm -hmm. band. We really uh, were together, Fernanda, Luana and I were already uh, thinking about this for a long time before the announcement. It was, we were already dreaming about a name, uh, writing music together. Um, but we were doing it at our own pace because we both had our own priorities, really had our own priorities. But I had, um, I didn't really feel comfortable in, in Burning Witches simply because of the way things were, were done in the band. Um, I'm not a, going into depth, but um, I just didn't feel like it was my, my fate to be in this band. And I think that uh, I could uh, reach better, um, make myself happier, by doing things that I start, so for example, start my own band, and I can finally have um, write my own music, uh, feel like I can say something about the sound of the band, and have some di um, uh, how to say it, some freedom of expression. And this is something that I can finally have with the two bands that I am in right now. And it's something that I've been searching for a very long time, and that's why I've been in so many different bands. I never really found the right place because I always thought, oh, I have to be the bass player. I have to just play what all is right. Um, but now I finally, I'm in the right position now. <laughs> but there were a lot of things, you know, it's, it, it can never be 100% perfect. And I'm, I'm still very happy that I've been part of Burning Witches. It was just not my thing, really. Okay. Did you consider to play bass in Crypta? Um, not even. <laughs> no, no, I didn't consider it. Even though I, I, I always think, God damn, I would love to play bass in a, in a band because it's so much easier to me. It's a lot more easier. Um, and I can totally lose myself when I do that. But um, Fernanda and Luana, um, when they asked me, when they invited me for, for this starting project, which is Crypta right now, mm -hmm. uh, they were precisely looking for, for a guitarist because they didn't have a guitarist back then. And um, they thought about me and I said, okay, so my, my place right now is already to be the guitarist in the band. So that's fine for me. <laughs> okay, we're, we're gonna talk about Crypto, but first I'm gonna ask you something about Cobra Spell, which I loved the, the EP, by the way. Um, how did you came up with the idea Yes, yeah, so the idea of starting Cobra Spell also dated in 2019 or something like that. Um, it was together with my uh, boyfriend, Sebastian Silva. Um, we were really, we are, we are really inspired by the 80s. We love the 80s vibe, um, the 80s aesthetic, the music, the cars, everything 80s. We are totally obsessed. And uh, we really wanted to start a band that you don't see anymore. Um, because you have a lot of traditional heavy metal bands, but you don't have the one that is like sleazy, the one that is, that that doesn't care about the extravagant of the extravagance of looks and stuff. And we thought that would be pretty cool 
because we, we don't we don't we don't really have shame to be a little bit extra sometimes. So we wanted that band, and that's how we started Cover Spell together. Um, we started writing, but also in a very slow pace, just for fun, just for for fun. And um, he writes the lyrics, Sebastian, and I write the compositions of the songs. And we felt like this is a very easy way of writing together, and it felt very comfortable since he's very good in 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 English and he can write very well. And um, myself, I'm more of the the sound. I really like to <laughs> to make sound, so that's what makes me happy. And this is kind of how how the EP came together. We just chose like four songs that we think, okay, this is good to see how people will react to it. We don't know if it's something and we'll see how if it's something and if it's something we're gonna write an album. And that's kind of how the how Love Venom uh, came into form. And yeah, that, that's how Cobra Spell emerged. And when when we can when can we expect the the full album? So the full album is already written, it's already finished. Um, we're currently working on the demos. Um, so recording it, but we're doing it also in a very easy pace. We don't have any deadlines, so that I really like to work in this way because then we can really work towards what we are, what we want. And um, so yeah, I, I'm just gonna take the time for it. I, I'm not sure if it's, if we're gonna release it this year or the next one. I hope this year, of course. It all depends. It all depends on what happens. So um, yeah, the songs are there. The songs are definitely there. We, we have the lineup, so yeah. It's Great. it's the same lineup. It's the same. Yeah, it's it's um, well not the same as Love Venom. We we um, a half year ago we changed the drummer. Um, okay. We have Leonard Cacoli, mm -hmm. which is a, a French uh, drummer, which he plays very well, and um, we asked him to play. And uh, in, in in actually in Love Venom we had a session drummer drum the the parts okay. actually <laughs> love venom was completely i i recorded the bass and the guitar and all the guitars for for love venom and we had a session drummer for 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 the for the things and and alex did the, did the vocals so it was pretty put together because it was recorded in coronavirus so we were very limited um i, I couldn't let my boyfriend fly in here it was just very very hard so yeah uh, with the album, we are planning to do it like with time and hopefully after the corona when we can fly together and actually book studio together and um, yeah, th this kind of things to do it right this time. But let me tell you something, it has an, an amazing sound. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you produce DP, right? Yeah. That's great. That's great. It's a great production. And uh, oh, I can I, I mean I, I I didn't mix a master I didn't mix a master okay. I, I choose the direction mm -hmm. you, know? you choose the sound how it's going to sound and, yes, and so be I closer to the eighties right yeah I can I can tell you the the singer Alex Alex Panza he's a great singer he's an amazing singer. I'm yeah, so totally happy. Agree. I'm so happy that we got to have him in the band and that he he's interested in playing with us. Um, I saw him play live for the first time and I was so impressed that oh god damn it I wish he could join and he he accepted and that made me very happy. <laughs> that's great. That's great. And and do you have any plans to put this band live and do some shows around the world or Europe? I have so many dreams. I have so many dreams with this band. Um it's just the coronavirus is holding us back a lot because um we are an international band. Um my boyfriend lives all the way in in America. In the, in the United States, mm -hmm. so um, right now he cannot fly here because of coronavirus, and I haven't seen him in a year. So we ha we haven't had a proper rehearsal with the whole band together. So the band hasn't even met each other. This is really uh, crazy. So we we have been together for one and a half year, but we haven't had a proper band meeting, and and that's something that is holding us back a lot. So we are just trying to work in forward as much as, much as we can. I'm, I'm just writing a lot of music right now and making demos in my own time. So on, after the coronavirus is finished, we will have a set list um, ready to, to directly go into the rehearsal place and get it done. Um, I'm trying to prepare everything that is show-wise important, such as what is going to be um, the 
well, I mean, details, details. And um, I'm very excited. I hope it's possible. Of course, we are very, very little band. You know, it's not like, like crypto, like it went so it exploded. Something I'm so surprised about. But we, we, we. I want to con to play concerts with Coverspo anyway. <laughs> hope it will happen really soon. This uh, whole pandemic situation really goes hope. away. <laughs> we, can, we can see each other. We can. Go, I can go to a Cobra Spell concert or crypto, whatever, just to uh, just to have fun. You know, that's that's what we need for now. Yeah, absolutely. and I really hope. Cobra Spell play in Brazil. Oh, I would love to. I hear always from Fernanda and Luana, they tell me how um, how um, concerts in Brazil are and how um, passionate the people are in the concerts. I'm used to the, to the Dutch audience, which is very, with the arms. I've, I've, been, I've been to <laughs> Holland many, I've been to Holland many times. And uh, the, the last time I was there, I think it was uh, 2017, if I'm not wrong. And mm -hmm. I saw in Amsterdam, I saw um, a Queen's Reich and Armored Saint. Ooh, nice. It was very nice. But then, but then, of course, the audience wasn't the same here. Here, people would go crazy. Yeah. And, and there it was like, okay, there was a lot of fans, people singing and screaming and stuff. But it's not... Yeah, well... That's what we used to say most of the time here in, 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 the, in the YouTube channel because there's a big difference between our audience who who are we are we were new in this uh, show business scenario. I mean, we're not familiar to all these bands since when they started to uh, come and play since the 80s. They started to come here like 20, 30 years ago. So for us, we are more enthusiastic. But I believe that those fans there in Europe, they're way more into... Um, been these kind of bands for many years and they've seen it tons of times like 20 times or 30 yeah, times yeah or they're they're just very shy they're just yeah. very very shy people and they're always i mean it's uh, i'm not saying anything bad i don't want to try to sound bad about here because they're very supportive but um they're very critical always and this is part of how Dutch people are. They're always very critical and standing there and analyzing every single detail Oh, they made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the audience here in South America is wild. Awesome. I, I would <laughs> love to experience that. I haven't experienced it yet, but I, with crypto, I'm sure it will happen. Talking about crypto, how did you met the girls and how did you receive the the invite to, to play in, in a Brazilian band? Yeah, so uh, my first interaction with uh, Fernanda and Luana uh, was in 2018 when we shared a, a concert with the with a lineup of Burning Witches and Nervosa. So we just played a show together and we saw each other face to face for the first time, even though we knew our, our names a little bit. And I, I actually really look up to them for a long time um, because I've seen them live <laughs> before. Um, and I was like, whoa, Nervosa, that's cool. It's awesome. I, I really liked. And um, so, yeah, we just always kept a little bit contact but through social media. And um, around a year later, um, they said that they were really interested to, to work with me. And that's something that really <laughs> amazed me because I was always looking up to them and thinking, wow, they are so cool. They're really doing what they want. You know, they're playing, like seeing women play um, and tour around the world and make a name from themselves is very inspiring. And it was very inspiring for me. And for them to uh, approach me to create something new was some, uh, was a very amazing chance to me. And it was, and it, and since they asked for, for death metal and I thought, okay, I don't have any death metal in my, in my life anymore, unfortunately. So I thought I need a little bit more of death metal in my life. And I said, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go for, for it and let, let's write some music together. And um, yeah, we, we, we saw it a little bit as a side project at first. Um, so we were just making our music um, a lot later. We decided, okay, we also need a second guitarist. So that's how we started uh, auditioning some girls. And that's the way we found Taina. And um, close after we uh, decided to announce the lineup. And that's how it... Uh, it all went. That's right. Yeah, uh, and and uh, and then just the last Wednesday, 
uh, Napalm Records released the first video from the, the song is From the Ashes. And it also announced the name of the album that is Echoes of the Soul, which is going to be released on the 11th of June. So subscribers, buy the album when, it, when it's out here. Uh, so uh, what? When the first time when I listened the first, uh, I thought it was like different from from Nervosa sound, which is kind of what we expected. I I, I don't think the band broke or separate went went into separate ways and and tried the same as what they same were kind doing. Of sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's and this song, um, the experience that I that I'm I'm saying to you is about this specific song. Is that it's way, way more into the more extreme metal, which is black metal with some pieces <laughs> of black metal. Um, yeah. So, what what can you tell us about these songs in general, the whole album in general, and also uh, what is your input regarding these songs? What did you create it? Uh, how was the uh, the whole recording process? So, as for uh, the album, we have taken the time to write it together. We have all written in this album. Um, well, mainly in this album, Luana, uh, Fernanda and I have written in the album um, since the time, because Taina came a little bit later. But um, yeah, we, we have taken the time and we all have very variant influences. Uh, that, that's why the sounds in the Echoes of the Soul will be very hybrid. There will be songs that sound more black metal. There will be songs that sound more brutal. And there will be songs that sound more just like classic death metal. And this is because we wanted to find a balance for everyone. Uh, myself, I have a lot of blackened death metal inspiration. I really like bands like Behemoth, Hate, Belfagor, Vader. And uh, I really wanted to add that in the band. And uh, Luana has a lot of old school death metal. Uh, inspiration and she wanted some of that too and Fernanda for her was the brutal the brutal is her thing so we we try to combine it together and some songs are um are more black and that that's how it kind of happens and from the ashes the single that came out happens to be the one that is uh more black death I would say and um yeah, that, that's, that's how it went. And uh, regarding the recordings, we recorded the album in uh, Brazil in January, which is two, two three months ago. <laughs> I, I don't know what day it was today. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in April. It's always for three we're months. We're in April already. It goes very fast. And uh, we, we recorded in one month. And um, we decided that I would record all the rhythm guitars of the album because... I did most of the demos because back, back then um, Taina was not in the band yet. And um, we, we decided that to have one person to do all the rhythm. So we had that done. Um, we did it very fast because we had just one month for everything. And um, we got to do it, even though it was very time. We had deadlines, so we really had to, to work with it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much how Echoes of the Soul was done and I'm very anxious to to see how it will be received it's still it's, it's gonna be in June but I'm, I'm really excited yeah well and, and and that's something that's very interesting that I didn't know that I didn't know until you said is that you you this you Fernanda and Luana decided to uh, uh, put a second guitarist after the band was already formed and uh, we had we oh, have an idea. Yes, yeah, so from the beginning, Fernanda and Luana, they in already wanted the idea of having two guitarists in the band, even though they already knew that they wanted me in the band, which is very a big honor. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't really know who to ask for a second guitarist, so we really took our time for that. We just wanted to have the, the name already write some music in our own tempo and after we have find like our vibe um we thought okay let's look for a guitarist that is like this you know that fits our vibe just to uh, be sure that it's going to be the right person and um, we decided that it has to be a person that it had to be because it's already in the past <laughs> uh, 
that likes to play solo guitar too, that um, is willing to exchange guitar solos and record their own solos and, you know, uh, also write music. Um, she wrote one of the one of the songs in the album too. And in the future, we will be all together, of course, because we will then, then start all together and write with the whole band. Um, so yeah, this this is kind of uh, how it went. We just wanted to have the, the double guitar action. Yeah, well, with two, with two guitars, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a wider possibility for you yeah, when, you, when you created and created tons of melodies and double leads, guitars and stuff. It's gonna be yeah, great. and and she's a Taina is a very talented guitarist, and I'm very happy to have her in the band and. Um, the chemistry is great and uh, we understand each other very well as guitarists since he also has some melodic approach which i have an appreciation for melody which is sometimes a bit hard for death metal but um she also really likes that and that makes me really happy <laughs> so how many how many songs in the records oh that's a good question uh 10 songs, ten songs. and right. a bonus track yeah Cool, that's great. And, and and you recorded here in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. Yes. Uh, what did you think about the city? I, I know we. It's a. I don't know if you went out a lot, you know, because of this uh, whole thing, situation. But what were so, your impressions about Sao Paulo? We recorded in a studio named uh, Family Mob in uh, in the center of Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. and um, since we were indeed really in the middle of the pandemic, pandemic. It was not very easy to go outside and do the tu tourist thing. So I've seen it a little bit. And uh, one thing that really took my attention, it's completely different from where I live, definitely. Um, but I really like how the people are um, very open, very um, communicative. Something that here in the Netherlands, if you start talking to someone, they will think that you're crazy. <laughs> but um, it's very different. It's very different. A lot of... Uh, green plan i mean a lot of plants in the city something that really surprised me here everything is very close together and there it's very very big very big yeah okay Great. next next time you next time you fly to brazil come to rio yeah rio de janeiro we, we, we are from rio, we are from rio de janeiro we are from uh, rio. Yeah. so yeah. i hope if, even if, if, if even if you don't play come here and spend some time we, we're gonna bring you to bars and stuff all around just to have some fun it's a very nice place people say oh rio is dangerous no it isn't it isn't but it's fun so feel yeah. free to come here i, I would here. love to go. i would love to go. let's hope let's see what the future brings and hope that yes uh, yes, get yes. absolutely uh, sonia you played with burning witches in a few big festivals in europe and could we expect cobra spell and crypta on those festivals um maybe for the next year I hope so. I really hope so. Um, I cannot say too much because I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if the con the festivals are going to continue. I hope for next year, yes. But uh, we we're going to try our best. We're going we're gonna, gonna to try our best to get as much festivals as we can and spread the word. Yeah. But we cannot promise anything because... Um, the bands that were booked for past year, I go, I were going to this year, and from this year they're going to the next. So there is such a long waiting list of bands that want to play. That we're we're a new band. We 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 are out there, and we haven't played a show yet. So um, for us, it's, it's, we're gonna try our best, definitely. That's and right. when when everything becomes normal again, uh, how is it gonna be with Crypta and Co Cobra Spell? Are you going to play together? I, I don't know if the bands are going to play together, but yeah, together is impossible because it's totally <laughs> different style. I mean, I, I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded. If I get yeah, the well, chance, like, twice in a I'm fine with it. <laughs> yeah. But um, I definitely want to play with both bands live. Definitely. After the pandemic, I'm going to try my best. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're already working on concerts with Crypta. We are already booking stuff for the future. That's for sure. That's nice. That's nice. So, Sonia, a couple of, uh, well, one, one quick question that is going to make you think a lot because it's very hard. I know we're, we're, we're 
bad guys. And just you no know, kidding. Um, <laughs> you have to tell you have to tell us five your five favorite bass players and your favorite favorite oh, boy. Uh, guitar players. players. Because since you started with the bass and then went to the guitar, so we have to tell us both. So you I'm have gonna to start with the guitarist because the guitarist is easier for me now. Um, I really like Ingvi Malmsteen, Tony McAlpine, Marty Freeman, uh, George Lynch, and I have five here. No, I have Ingvi um, Malmsteen, Tony McAlpine, Marty Friedman. It's really. Uh, it's really, and there's one more. I kind of have a tie because I really like Vinnie Vincent too a lot, even though he's oh. the real deal. So I, I'm going for it's really this time. Besides, besides Ace, who is your favorite Kiss guitar player? Vinnie Vincent. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's that, that's that's a subject that we that we uh, use a lot here in this channel uh, because Vinnie Vincent is a is a weird persona. Is a weird. But he's, he's a genius. Okay. He's a genius. The, the, his genius. albums and yeah. his, his contribution with kids is absolutely. Is and he wrote good. a lot of music too. Um, yes. Looking at the credits of who wrote songs in in Kiss, and he wrote "I Love It Loud," which is something. Wow, he did it, and you wouldn't expect that because his playing as solo guitarist is very uh, wacky. He has a very particular way of playing. Uh, even though I really love. I really love his solo material a lot. You like yeah. you mean the the Vinnie Vincent invasion? Yeah, Vinnie Vincent. I love that stuff. That's great. And that's he, great. Mark Slaughter singing and it's very cool. Yeah. And about and about your favorite bass players? Bass players. I know yeah, it's difficult. Players, it's so but difficult to me. Uh, number I one, Gene. About, number one, Gene, Gene Simmons, Simmons. Gene Simmons. Frank Bello from Anthrax. Good choice. Uh, Diddy Verney from Overkill is uh, very inspirational because of his sound. I really like his sound. Um, and then for the two others, um, I can I have a very hard time choosing. I know Joe Bench was very inspirational for me, which is the bass player from Bolt Thrower. Um, but for a fifth, um, Steve DiGiorgio, I would go. For oh, him. that's great. Great. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Great yeah. Choice. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. But it's, it's hard because I haven't thought about favorite bass players in a long time. <laughs> Yeah. Before 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 you leave, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Wow! Wow, that's cool. Awesome. Hell yeah! So you <laughs> met them three times. <laughs> three times. Wow. I went. I went to. I went to Kiss Cruise once. Wow! I am jealous. <laughs> I'm so good. <laughs> Oh boy, I, I used to, when I got into Kiss, I used to cry. I know it sounds very <laughs> stupid, I used to cry before sleep, uh, realizing that I was thinking that I would never ever meet any member of Kiss. Uh, and um, just two years ago, when I was playing on the festival Sweden Rock, I got to meet Gene Simmons. And that was just amazing. I think that's my, my biggest highlight. Uh, from my musician careers, meeting Gene Simmons. Um, aside of playing Bakken, I consider that one of the most amazing experiences, but meeting Gene Simmons is something that I would never forget. And it's, um, yeah, it, it's something I thought that would never happen. You probably felt the same, like, damn, they're For sure. For sure. <laughs> in front of you, like, they're real. <laughs> I met them three times, and all the times were was the same thing. Wow. Well, mm -hmm was yeah. like the first time. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations for that. <laughs> Rodrigo, quer fazer mais alguma pergunta para ela, cara? Não, tô tranquilo, cara. Manda yeah. bala. Okay, so now let's finish. And do you have any message for your Brazilian fans? I just want to say a big big obrigado, ou obrigada. Uh, for everyone for listening to the interview and for you for inviting me to the interview and for the amazing response to From the Ashes. Um, we never knew how, it's gonna, how it was going to be um, received. And I see a lot, a lot of amazing Portuguese comments under the comment section. I don't know what it means, but it seems very positive. And I, I'm really thankful for all the support. And uh, I can't wait to play with Krypta in, uh, in, all over Brazil. 
That's okay, great. Sonia, thank you very Sonia, much. Thank Speaking you very much. Honor. Thank you very much for being here. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. It's so a big much. honor for us. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this interview. And Definitely. then we began, and, and to and uh, and that, and I believe that maybe one day, if all things go certain, then we can possibly one day uh, interview maybe Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley. You never know. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> Fingers I, crossed. I will be, I will be uh, looking the interview then. Yes. Yes. I will send you the link. Or maybe I can be the guest. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> no. Anyway, thank thank you so much for uh, for everything. <risos> Thank you, it was a pleasure. Galera, então essa aí foi Sônia Nubis, conversou com a gente aí no Rods Online mais uma vez. Obrigado, Rodrigão, e obrigado a Sônia aí por participar desse vídeo aí mais uma vez. Valeu, galera!